Hey there, happy Tuesday. Tonight we are going to start assembling a few blocks from the Splendid Sampler 2. We finished one last night and now we're going to prep them for the quilt as you go process. So thanks so much for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, and I'm here for about an hour and I work on projects from beginning to end so you guys can be part of the whole process along the way. Uh, and we, again, are working on the Splendid Sampler 2 tonight. Uh, we have eight blocks ready to be sewn into our squares. So this is the one we finished last night, the blue ribbon block. And, uh, we are going to take that and seven other squares and start sewing them into our groups of four. So I'm hoping we can sew all of them into the groups of four tonight and then we can prep them for quilting. And what I mean for that, by that, I mean I, like sandwiching the back fabric with the batting and then pin it together to baste it. And we're gonna do it in small little sections like this. We're not doing the whole quilt, we are just doing them in small sections and then we'll be sewing the quilted small sections together. So we'll be doing that later this week, but this is what, what we get then. So here's one of my rows that's complete. Well, first of all, we're doing this. So basically we are sandwiching them together and then quilting each section alone like so here's one ready to be added to the quilt and this is what it looks like when it's added to the quilt uh, we're combining it with just like a little binding piece and uh, so we are quilting them in smaller squares and then putting all of those squares together so this is one of my rows here's the back you can kind of see, you can see where it gets divided into its separate squares. And that is the process. So we're going to be doing uh, all of that this week. And um, we're going to get back to having no blocks done again. So next month we'll be making a whole pile more blocks. So awesome, you guys. I'm going to flip you around. Let's get going here. Okay. So thank you again for joining me tonight here. Again, here is the Splendid Sampler 2 book. That's where all, all of these are from. I'm gonna just scroll down, see your comments. Hello, everyone. Uh, we got, yes, um, we, got the, we got Facebook working tonight. So last night, Facebook was, I don't know, just not talking to me. <laughs> so that wasn't working. Uh, but we got it working again tonight, which is great. Okay, so our plan for the night, again, is to take uh, our... We have eight blocks here. Uh, we laid them out last night, and I, I put them back in, in um, clockwise order, so I should be able to find uh, the spots that they go. But we are going to sew them into groupings of four. So here's one uh, that's been waiting, ready to be quilted. Uh, it is just the front right now. So I want to make uh, a couple more of these. Uh, I do think we'll probably have to add some fabric to the edge of this, but I think I'm not going to add that till it's kind of quilted together. That's what we've been doing with the other ones too, just kind of adding a strip after. And I think that's been fine. Let me see if I can show an example of that. I'm just adding a little bit. Um, did I do it for any of these? I must have. I feel like I've, I'm adding fabric onto every single one. So here's an example. So this, this guy, after I quilted it, it was just too small still. So I ended up adding just a little bit of white fabric to finish it off here. And really, you can't even tell. Um, it's going to be fine. I actually probably should do it for this, this little area here too. So I'll have to, before we actually sew everything together. I'll have to go through and add my little extras. Just some of these blocks ended up being a little too small. Um, so I did, like here, this whole entire bottom, I added an extra strip to it. 
uh, just the quilting process kind of pulls the fabric together. So I wonder, there must be a way for people who do quilt as you go a lot, there must be a way that they kind of counteract this. This is my first quilt as you go project. All right, folding this guy back up. So this is, this is the latest one we did. So I really like this one. We had the elephants holding, holding these little balloons here. That was kind of fun. Um, all right, so that's going in the finished zone. I think I just dropped all of my all of my um, blocks on the ground, so it's probably not in order anymore. Uh, and this one I'm going to leave out because we're going to actually sandwich this one together uh, in theory later tonight. So I'll I'll let that one go. And then I'm going to get out my second box for this project, and that is this one here. This one contains all of our pre-cut pieces of backs and batting. So we've already cut out a pile. I don't know if I cut out enough quite yet, but I cut out what fabric I had. So we may have to do a few more. All right, I'm gonna need three of these. I'm gonna just take them out right now. Uh, so this is for the backing. I'm hoping to make basically two more of these. So we'll have three total. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna take that out. Let's take out three bits of batting. I'm going to just take them off the top. We are using, like I'm, I'm playing around with just scrap batting that I have. So this quilt is actually going to be assembled out of totally tons of different types of batting, which is kind of crazy, but I think, I think I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm just going to pick the three on the top. They all look kind of the same. So that's, that's fine. All right. Three of those. And then the only other thing we need is our sashing pieces right now. So we need sashing pieces and our little cornerstone pieces. So I need two of these. I'm going to just kind of close my eyes and pick two. Oh, that's like a whole bundle of them. Let's just take, let's take one of those blue ones and let's just take one of these kind of pinky ones. Uh, we pre-cut a bunch of these again, just randomly, not, not really the exact amount. And I've been kind of stealing some of these white sashing pieces to like, to fix, <laughs> to fix some of those edges. So we definitely don't have the right amount, but I did cut a few. This is to do the binding or the, um, the, the stitch as you go, or the quilt as you go parts later, but we're going to need eight of these. Three, four, and I think, like I said, we'll do repairs after we've quilt, quilted. One, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. So the rest of this we shouldn't need right now. I think I'm gonna, oh, I was gonna say, I think I'm gonna put that, those on the top, but if I just open this up in the other direction, then I can access, you know, cause I'm gonna need more of that white later, I think. All right, don't need that. Let's put these all to the side for later, and then we will need these sashing pieces now. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. I, I really like doing the feather quilting. I don't know what it is. I just, I think I feel like I'm doing something fancy when I'm doing it. I feel like I'm way better at doing those, just those feathers, those kind of easy going feathers versus, um, versus like just swirling around and stuff. I, I get like way more anxiety doing that. All right, so I am going to lay these out again. Again, I think I put them in clockwise order, although I didn't just lay these down in clockwise order, did I? There we go. I think I like that. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll see how this goes tonight. I think my my phone is being a little bit weird here, so hopefully, hopefully I don't conk out on you guys. I really hope that doesn't happen. Okay. Oop, clockwise. So there and there. All right, and then I'm gonna just let's give let's give this guy this square. We'll give this guy this square. And then each of these pieces gets a sashing piece. We are skipping one aspect of this, and that is that 
all of these blocks really need to be cut down to six and a half inches. So we're going to have to take a look at that. Uh, some of them should just end up being six and a half inches. Uh, but some, like this one, for example, we left a little large. Um, so, and we left that at large on purpose because remember when I said that the quilting kind of sucks in a little bit of it. Um, that I'm leaving that little bit so it can allow for that. However, the part that's on the inside, the part that matches up with our sashing pieces, uh, that actually needs to be cut to size. So I have to measure the six and a half inches and then just cut, cut two of the sides off. So we'll have to do that. So I think um, this is kind of the layout. And let's take a look at those six and a half inch pieces. Um, we're gonna just go one by one now that I know the position of all of them. So like this one, I'm just gonna cut off those two edges. This one, I'm gonna just cut off those two and leave these two. So I'm gonna just plop that right on top, grab my um, six and a half inch ruler. Okay, and we'll just go one at a time through this. So I'm gonna just basically center my design Oh yeah, so I'm definitely gonna wanna trim down those sides. I'm gonna just, instead of getting a ruler big enough to go off the edge, I'm just going to uh, eyeball that off the edge. Okay, and you know what? I think instead of this big old uh, cutting mat, why don't we use a rotating cutting mat? I think that would work super perfect for this. It's just the right size. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best to center this design. I'm kind of looking at where the quarter inch mark is. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I need to trim this edge and this bottom edge. So I'm, I think I'm gonna just rotate this first, do the bottom edge. Ooh, this kind of makes me nervous. All right. Just gonna go all the way off the edge there. Okay, that's one edge. And just, uh, I like the rotating mat just because then I can have that nice hand position, that easier cutting position. There, so I'm gonna leave the outer edge slack on this. So this guy's done. See, it's off center now, but it will be in theory centered once we're, once we're finished. Let's just check on this guy. This one looks like it was a pieced one. See, so now this is one, uh, I, I'm less than the six and a half inches. So I, I was sewing this a little bit too tightly. So my seam allowance was probably just a hair too big. So my my piece, gosh, I'm, I'm at least an eighth of an inch shorter on, on the top here. I think this actually goes this direction, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll eventually have to add more to that, but I think we'll just sew it together for now. So, all right, that's their first row. Next up, let's test these. Ooh, this one, this went this direction too, right? Yeah, I think it, it, it wasn't like this. It was like this. So let's, let's make sure we get it in the correct direction. All right, this too, I left, I left some edge. So that's good. Okay, about right there. Wow, this is bulky in the middle. So now this one, I want the top and the side because the top and the side is what's gonna be sewn in here. Um, Sue's asking, what is the best presser foot for a beginner to buy when learning free motion quilting? It is kind of confusing, isn't it? So let me just take a look at mine here quick. Um, so they're basically all darning foots. Okay, so my other one is actually on my machine. So I have the one on my machine that's just a little circle. Now this one has so much more going on with it, right? Or presumably it has much more going on with it. It's really the same thing. Um, it's almost less, you can actually do free motion quilting without a foot altogether. Uh, the foot, it just kind of protects your fingers a little bit. Uh, so I would just, 
Oh, I can't get the one. I'll have to get it out tomorrow, but the one that I'll be using is that Westerly one. It is just a circle. And what I like about that one is that it's it's um it's a perfect circle with the needle right in the center. And what that means is um okay, so the the foot is the edge of the foot is is a quarter inch away from where from where the needle is wherever wherever the foot is. Sorry, I'm just trying to center this. So that means that I can use it as a guide and always be a quarter inch away from whatever I'm doing. So I do really like that one. However, anything that says a darning foot will work whether it's like an open toe darning foot, like what I had, um, it'll all be fine. I think it's a whole lot less about the foot and more about your speed. So uh, one thing that helped me, and, and you guys helped me with this, uh, someone here was telling me this when I started, just, and I, I didn't start all that long ago either, uh, but, Press faster with the foot than you think, and then move slower. So you're really actually kind of going fast. Like normally, the it would just take the fabric with you, um, but it's not going to because you don't have. You're gonna have your presser, your um, feed dogs down. So nothing's gonna be pulling it. You're the one that's gonna have to move it. So have it going fast. Have like your foot going faster than you think, and then move move slower. That was really helpful just to get kind of a feel, feel of things. But yeah, I think it's, it's kind of less about the foot. Okay, we're gonna go like right here, I think. And now I'm gonna cut off this side and this side. So I'm just gonna rotate this. Oh, okay, so Deborah says, I've looked at the foot, the Westerly foot, which is what I have, and it's sometimes called a ruler foot. Okay, so it is called a ruler foot because it's a little fatter. And uh, and that it's, it you get to the quarter inch thing out of it too, that it's always gonna be a quarter inch from your needle. Um, but it's called a ruler foot because it's actually a little fatter. So whereas this one, this one just has a really skinny little edge. The westerly one is about this tall. And what that means is that you can butt up a ruler against that and it's not gonna like slide over the top or anything like, like this little skinny one might. So it, the ruler feet um, have that, that fatness to it. I think that's kind of the main feature of a ruler foot. because you can butt up those um, acrylic rulers right to it. All right, so this side is done, all prepped. We just need to do the same on this side and then we can sew. And I think we might do that webbing sewing. Uh, do you guys remember when we've done that before? That is when we do the chain stitching, but we never, snip the pieces so it'll be like this crazy web that we sew together it's gonna make sense it's kind of a fun way of sewing pieces together that's actually kind of quick uh, i haven't done it in a while and i thought it'd be fun to fun to do with with these guys all right this again is one that's a little small we'll probably have to add to that one later i suspect this one will be a little small as well gosh we should almost press some of these, but I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, this one's a bit small. I'm going to just, I'm not going to trim anything off of this one. Gosh, that one's a mess too. It's all jiggity, jiggity around the edges, but we'll survive. Okay. All these I think are probably right at the exact, that six and a half inch point. Yeah. Which makes me think I'll probably have to add to the edge of all of these later once they're quilted. But that's okay. Oh, what direction did this go in? I think it was kind of like, I'm just trying to remember. I think it was like this, 
versus versus this. I suppose it looks the same either way. Ooh, that is that's smaller than it should be. Ugh. All right, for sure we'll have to add an edge to that one later. But like I said, I'm gonna do that after it's quilted, which may or may not be a good idea, but that's what we're doing. All right, so we have our two sets here, and I'm gonna just start sewing. So I'm gonna take uh, we. Like I said, we have two sets. So I'm going to take the first column, like the first two rows, or the first two columns of the first piece, and sew those. So I'm going to sew these two, then these two, then these two. Then I'll sew this one, these two, these two, and these two. And then I'm going to uh, take it off the machine and then sew the third column to all, all of them. Just kind of how we, what we typically do here for the chain stitching. But the thing is, I am not gonna snip them apart at that point. I'm gonna just try and press them and then uh, sew the rows together while they're still connected. That's the kind of the webbing way of doing it. And I think it's a bit faster. So we're gonna give it, give it a little bit of a go. All right, to the machine. All right, let's get this guy turned on. It's actually no on button for this turning the light on, but as long as this is plugged in, it is on this machine. Okay, the one thing we do have to pay attention to is what edge we're lining up the sashing with. Uh, so this is the top row. Um, so I need to line the bottom edge. The bottom edge has to be the nice edge because that's the one that's going to attach to the other other parts. So let's put these together. Oh, here we have an opportunity here for one of our leaders as well. So let's let's get another leader started. Back to our leaders and enders here. so quiet. <laughs> That's still just, I get a kick out of that. All right, let's put these edges together. Now, normally I would put the um, sashing piece on top, but we are trying to get uh, that bottom edge matching, so this just kind of made sense. Oh, but I can't do it that way if I'm going to do the the webbing way. So when you do the webbing way of sewing, you have to actually sew um, from top to bottom. So we already messed that up. <laughs> um, I guess we won't do it for the first one. So the first, the first. Uh, set we won't do that webbing way but the second set we will and then we can look at the difference all right so next up just kind of reading your comments too oh sue's working on the granny squares Yes, definitely you'll want to practice the free motion quilting. Uh, just grab some extra batting you might have around and play around with that. And you can actually turn those into little bags or little um, uh, mug rugs and stuff later, all your practice pieces. They're kind of fun. All right, I guess I'm gonna just finish this first one and then we'll switch to the second one. So I'm cutting off that first, that first row here. There we go, so our first two pieces, so let's th sew that third column on. Oh, 
is there anything we have to match up here? Okay, so that's something I, I wasn't really paying attention to. So on some of these, there are some points we want to match up. So like for this one, for example, uh, we want to match up these points. So I'm going to want to sew with this one on top so I can see um, where those points happen so I can try and hit those. Uh, all right, let's see. How's the... I guess we'll sew from the top here, even even though I'm trying to align these bottom pieces. That'd be a good good reason to put a, some clips or pins in here, but we're just, we're just going to do it. All right, so I'm aiming for where uh, these two pieces of fabric meet here, right at that point. Then hopefully our, we'll get it like a perfect point. And we have a second one down here, so that's the next one we're going to look at. And I think this is meant to be pressed open. It looks like I must have pressed it closed at some point, so let's open it now. Okay, so now here I'm aiming for this point. Ooh, I think I didn't quite hit it, but we'll see. All right, that was our first row. Let's cut our second row off of here. Easy peasy. I love, um, I don't get to read all the conversations while I'm doing the live, but it looks like you guys are working some stuff out, so that's awesome. I'm, I'll uh, definitely read, read through the comments when, when we're done here, if I missed anything. And if I, ooh, look, I didn't press that open, oh well. Uh, if there's a question and I don't answer it, just ask it again. I probably just didn't, I probably just missed it. Ooh, Luann got her batting today. Nice. Which that was a fun package to get. All right. Sewing this fun little octopus guy. Ooh, whoops, it kind of slid a little bit. Let's rematch those up. If I keep doing that, I'll have to definitely get the clips out and start clipping these instead of just trying to wing it. Clipper pin. I think I'm sewing my seam allowances a bit small, meaning my block is going to be a bit large, but I think that's probably a good idea. Ooh, I got like a little thread cut. There we go. Um, I think that's a good idea if this ends up being a little bit bigger because there were some edges that um, I think we're going to be a bit too small. All right, so th this is our three pieces for our, our three rows for the first um the first block, I'm going to actually leave them on the machine for now, and I'm going to start up this next row. And this next this next block, I'm going to try and do that webbing way of doing it. So doing to do that, you have to sew in order. So this is the first column. I cannot flip it around and do it upside down like this. I have to do it where the top, I'm going top down the whole, the whole way. So I, that's one extra thing I need to pay attention to. Still need to line this bottom though. Luckily these are small little blocks. Okay, so that's our first row. And while that's still on, we'll do the second row. And the third. Oh, <laughs> wondering what to do with the hoarding squirrel. I was just talking about that today. So we did that. 
um, when when uh, everyone was first getting COVID here, or I guess not getting COVID, but when we all had to stay home, we did that embroidery with the squirrel that was hoarding um, toilet paper. <laughs> I just have, uh, I did, uh, mine was just kind of framed in the hoop and I just have it sitting by my desk. But yeah, that would be fun to do something with a little bit more in depth. Okay, so that's our first row. And I think, I'm trying to remember how to do this webbing way of doing it. I think I have to take it off the machine. So we're gonna go like so. Get our little leader going. Okay, so the first, the first block I'm gonna just set aside for now. That's here. Um, we're gonna have to do, we're gonna have to press that first. So this one I'm going to sew. You notice I take I took the whole thing off of the machine. So now I have the chain and I'm starting at the top again, but I'm leaving all of this together still. I'm going to just let it dangle. And then we're going to match up our next piece here. And you know what? I think I am going to start grabbing some of my clips here. Let's just it super sticks to um to my um machine here so that seems like a good spot for it. I just want to match up this bottom edge. I think this is going to be an easier way of doing this. This is a messy one. Oops. Ah, that one bit the dust. Try another. Okay I think that's all I need. I just needed to grab that bottom. Maybe this one is a little bit larger. That's good. Ooh, I might be veering a bit. A lot of fuzzles on this guy. We just handled this one so much. There was so much needle turn applique and embroidery and everything that uh, there was a lot going on there. All right, so I'm keeping on sewing. These are all still connected. And then our last piece while it's still connected. Ah, my machine sounds so good. I'm still just like over the moon about that. And I can just cut through all of these layers of fabric. It's awesome. All right, let's get another leader. I mean, you can really make a whole lot of these leaders with just a project like this. This is what we're cutting apart and making into half square triangles and doing a whole nother quilt out of these pieces. All right, so time to press and then we will be back to stitching. Okay. Let's grab the pressing mat. I do have the iron heated up. So let's start with the one that we just did. So first of all, let's snip these guys off. Don't need them anymore. Although that one's still on the machine. All right, so this is the webbing one. So this is where we left all of the pieces together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press them with them all together too, and then we'll sew them together, still with them all attached to each other. It's kind of goofy, and it gets a little bit cumbersome here and there, but it actually, uh, in the end, I think this is a faster way of doing it. It's just kind of fun too. All right, so I think, I suspect I pressed these guys to the inside. Let's see what we did here. 
Yeah, so I'm pressing the blocks, the seam allowances towards the inside, and then um, I'm pressing the other one outward. So we're going to be nesting, doing that nesting of the seams here. So I'm going to just flip this around. We'll press these to the inside. Like so. Looks like I did some funny things with my seam allowance when I was sewing earlier in in this block. Flipped a seam allowance quite a bit there. Oh well. No one's gonna see that. All right, let's do the top one right away. We'll have to check to see if we sewed our those points together well on the other one too. Ooh, pressed all those weird. Okay, and then these this bottom one wants to go outward. And it already kinda is, so that's good. They all kind of wanna be pressed in the direction that we're pressing them, so that's that's nice. All right, let's flip it around and just do a final little press. I, I am pressing all my embroidery stitches and stuff, which I don't typically like doing. I'm trying not to squish them too much, but I'm going to put this through the wash and everything, and uh, that will poof up all our stitches again. I'm not too worried about it. And with my fir the first splendid sampler quilt, I've run that quilt through the machine. Uh, so, uh, through the uh, washing machine so many times and the embroidery all looks really good still and it's all still there. It's not like coming out or anything. So I totally think that all this embroidery is gonna last just fine. All right, so this is all together still. We are going to uh, nest these seams. I think I'm gonna pin them right now, why not? I'm gonna pin right where those folds meet uh, that's called nesting a seam together. So uh, some of the seam allowances were pressed that way. The other ones were pressed the opposite direction. So uh, they end up going the opposite. And so the folds are opposite. And by bumping those folds together, that kind of gives us a really good uh, lined up seam. So I'm gonna just put a clip on both of those just to hold them in place. And then since now we're dealing with kind of like a big piece here and it's kind of floppy, I'm gonna just throw a couple other clips in there. When I'm working with a smaller piece, I don't always use clips or pins or anything just cause it's so small that I can just hold it in place. But when it gets floppy, that's when I throw the clips in. All right, so our top, our top layer is ready to be sewn. Again, I'm still attached to, to everything, which is kind of goofy, but it's gonna work uh, really well, I think. All right, these ones on the other hand, I am gonna snip apart, which is an extra step. And now I gotta remember what order they go into. The other ones I don't have to remember because they are together, they're in order. So that's, I think that's actually one of the real benefits of doing the webbing way of um, piecing a bunch of things together is I don't have to remember what order they go in because they just inherently are in the order. Um, Colleen's asking if I use the, the quilt as you go technique for the first one. I did not. So the first quilt, the first Splendid Sampler, I had not done any free motion quilting or anything yet. Uh, that one I entirely stitched in the ditch. There is no fancy quilting at all. And stitch in the ditch just means I sewed in the seams, like around all the squares. So I basically sewed around the squares and that was it. So there is no uh, fancy stitching, but that is completely a legitimate way of uh, quilting. You do not need to do crazy fancy quilting to be done with a quilt or have done the qu done a quilt. Uh, that one I literally hardly did anything. And hardly doing anything was still way more than I, what I had really done before. I think that might have been the biggest quilt that I've that I quilted together. 
All right, so we got the top and bottom. Now we just need this one. Those seams going outward. I think this blue is going to look nice with these blocks. All right, so I'm going to just let this one sit on the side, but we will do the same clipping with this top piece. The same nesting of the seams here. Okay, and I think, yeah, I do have to line, I have to pay attention to these. Um, points on this one so I am going to I'm going to flip my clips in the opposite direction cuz I'm going to sew with that one on the top okay, I don't think I lined it up very well let's try that again Probably better if I lay it down. There we go. Much easier <laughs> than trying to do that in the air. Um, Alyssa or Deborah's asking Alyssa, were some of these blocks on a link somewhere that was pre-released? I don't remember if that's how they did this. Um, none of them are available, whether it's the first or the second Splendid Sampler. Um, without the book, I believe now. Um, I think they might have released some uh, just as patterns beforehand, like, but none of those are available any anymore once the once the books came out. I think so. It's only available. This is this project's only available as the book. All right, let's do this guy first. gosh, we are so close to the really big bulky ribbons on this one that I almost could have sewed this with a, a zipper foot. Like, I gotta go way above it here. Ah, it's so bulky. So my seam's gonna be a bit small, a bit tiny here, but oh well. Alright, I'm gonna move those guys out of the way. Here's those seams that I want to nest. And I also have a seam here that I want to, where this line, these two lines meet, um, where they cross, I want to sew through that. That's going to hopefully get me a good point on this, this one here. So here's that next point right here that I want to deal with. Okay, get you out of the way. Here's my next point. Okay. Let's sew this feller. Then we'll get this off the machine. Okay, now this is the one that's connected to everything yet. So this one's a little odd, but we're gonna we're gonna work with it. Oh, let's sew this direction. Yay, we're going to start quilting these tomorrow. Uh, that means I'll be getting the other machine out, and I'll also be putting up my, my uh, the extension table for the machine. So I have a nice, big, flat surface. You don't need an extension table if, you're, um, if your machine sits like inside the table or in a cabinet or something. So, it's, so if your machine's like lowered down, or at table height, then you don't need an extension table, but mine just sits on the top of the table here. So having that extra little table is a bonus.
Okay, so before taking that one off the machine, I think we're gonna get that one off of the machine by sewing this one. Let's get rid of that leader here. So let's just quickly pin, um, pin, not pin, but clip these two together. Oh, Tracy says, I love watching when you free motion. So I'm excited. Uh, that got me going the other day when we did that free motion quilting because I hadn't done that in a while and it just felt good. So uh, it's fun that we have enough blocks at this point to to do some of that free motion quilting here. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to do that as well. All right, let's flip that around and match up these seams. Then we'll press this. We'll press these all pretty well, and then then we'll be ready to prep them for quilting. I think we'll have time yet to sandwich them together. That'd be good. Yeah, this one must have like kept kept both of these bigger. side lined up. Oops. Okay. So that's ready to sew and then then we just have that one more seam of this one that's still on the machine there. All right. Yeah, free motion quilting. I definitely feel like I'm just getting going with that. Uh, it would be nice to just... It'd be fun to do a whole nother quilt just for the purpose of practicing certain motifs again. Ones that I for sure need a ton of practice on. I still feel like it's it's hard for me to get in, out, in and out of small spaces. Like I get stuck. I get trapped. Uh, is a better way of saying it. I get trapped when I free motion quilt into little corners. I know people are like, well, you just squeal here and there and then you're out. But I just, my brain doesn't do that. <laughs> it it uh, can't see ahead that far, I, I guess. All right, we got to pin this guy together and then that is it. We got our pieces sewn at that point. All right, so this is still attached. So we know what direction it goes and everything. Flip it around. Easy peasy, let's nest those seams again. So here's a, a normal size wonder clip and the mini wonder clip, just if you're interested in the size difference. It's fun seeing these all come together. Hey April, um, so April's asking on YouTube, what do I suggest for like one of the beginning embroideries? So all of my animal embroideries are pretty easy. I think one of the easiest ones is the hedgehog. The hedgehog and the lion, all they use are uh, basically a back stitch and like one other stitch that's a like a, that's a pretty easy stitch so um but any of those animals so like the the llama you know any any one of mine where you see like a cute little animal in the middle of the kit those are all um good beginner ones so i would just pick pick the animal you like best and and go that route um that's that's probably the way to do it and then the kits come with the supplies and everything that you need too. Um, you'll just need 
Uh, if you're gonna trace the design, then you just need like a pencil. Uh, you can use a water soluble marker too, but a pencil totally works fine. And there's also an iron on transfer that's way easy. Uh, all you need for that is an iron and like a paper towel to lay down first to protect your surface before you iron. And then just a scissors, that's all you need. Everything else, like the needle, the floss, uh, the hoop, instructions, all that is included. And I think the bunny, the bunny, which is also easy, uh, we've done a while back, and this is a few years ago, but we did the entire bunny from beginning to end, so you can stitch with me that whole entire process if you um, get those videos. All right, I, actually, I think we're done here. Let's take this off the machine. So if you want, like, extra, extra, uh, walk through then then the bunny one i have that whole video for it and i'm actually you guys i'm actually going to be working on uh, um videos of every single every single pattern and or every single kit so uh hopefully soon here um if you need help on any one of them that will happen <laughs> yep oh good Good April. Yes, the the hedgehog I think is the easiest, or I, I would consider that the easiest. Uh, you know, the back the back of the hedgehog is just all a bunch of big stitches, and the hedgehog is actually um, you'll see it later. I blew it up really large. That's the design that's behind me um, during these during these YouTube's. So if you look at any of my other YouTube's or or this one when I'm done here, you'll see that hedgehog. It's, that's the design. That's that's probably the easiest one. It has a, it's all back stitch, and then it has a teeny tiny satin stitch nose, but that's pretty easy too. Two nice good stitches to start out with. The reason I say that one's probably the easiest is um, it doesn't have any French knots, and it doesn't have any, like, lazy daisy stitches or something. I, I, I would consider those just a hair more difficult than um, than just the satin stitch and back stitch. So if you want the win of being able to do it, uh, start with start with the hedgehog and then then uh, try out a different one that, that you might like that might have like maybe one or two different stitches in there. And we can all for sure help you out in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group too, if you're having trouble with a stitch or or anything, uh, just let us know over in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook. Oh, this is looking fun! All right, you guys, we got ourselves a couple more. Uh, larger blocks here. So I'm just gonna quickly run over them um, with the iron before I sandwich them together. I'm not gonna trim them at all until we're done quilting it. And let's do, let's press this one too before we sandwich it up. This one, this, this is so tightly stitched together. Like there's so much holding and grabbing and pulling, whereas there's like nothing. This is just all open. And this one too is just all open fabric. So this one is just yanking at this. Uh, this one's going to be a trick <laughs> to, to press. I don't know. I don't quite know how we're going to do, or not press, but to, to quilt. We're definitely going to have to add a lot of extra on this one. But look how crazy this is. Look how many itty bitty 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 pieces were on this one. <laughs> yep, uh, that one's crazy. All right, and here's our last one. Again, I left the extra edge, so that will be trimmed off later. Although, maybe I was supposed to trim some off of this one. Oh, well, <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking I might, oh, maybe this one's just too big. 
we'll see. Uh, I may either have to cut off some of this, and which means we'll sew in some of that um, ribbon there. But I suspect this one is, just must be really small. Although it's the same size as the sashing. I don't know. I think we're going to lose some of our ribbon there when we sewed into the quilt. So I might have done that one wrong. I maybe should have trimmed that one down. Oh, well. It'll be fine. Okay, we got these guys. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. Let's sandwich these things. All right, so all those fabrics and that batting that we grabbed before, we're going to need those now. Oh, and I'm just thinking we might want to, we might want to press. Oh, yeah, for sure. We're going to want to press. Oh, you don't need to press the batting. But these these guys look a little bit crinkly. Let's let's give those a press. I'm sure I just cut this right off the bolt or something. Didn't press them or anything yet. So this is gonna be the back of our quilt. This is the blonde quilt. So we've kind of named this named this the blonde quilt. Uh, that was a challenge, so I always try and give myself challenges for basically every project. Every project I want to learn something or, or test a theory or something like that, right? So this quilt was, first of all, the quilt as you go. I hadn't done the quilt as you go technique ever before, so I wanted to give that a try. So this quilt was going to be about quilt as you go. The other thing was I was making so many like crazy bright like super saturated quilts. And I'm like, man, I just want to do one of those nice quilts that I see people make that's just mostly white. Like everything has a white background and it's just like a really pale, pretty quilt. Um, so I, I went into the fabrics that I had and all my pale colors were mostly these yellows. I was thinking I had like some more tans but I didn't have as many tans, you know, like this as I thought. So I ended up doing like tans and yellows. And then every once in a while, I'd pop in like a bright color here and there. Like, you know, here I, here I popped in this orange and here I popped in that little bit of orange too. So the challenge for me for this quilt was the quilt as you go. And can I make a light colored quilt? That's just like a pale, pretty quilt. Uh, so that's, so I'm actively having to tell myself, no, don't put in those bright colors. <laughs> uh, so that's that's a little bit of a challenge for me. Uh, so that, that's been the two main things for me with this quilt. Besides the blocks, each, each, of the, each of the individual blocks, there's so much to learn and practice and stuff too. So each one of those has its own like little experiments that I'm trying. But everything's always about learning and... Uh, testing theories out. All right, I'm going to do this on my mat just so I don't scratch my table up here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my my back piece of fabric. I'm going to get a little higher up for y'all too. All right. And uh, I'm going to tape this down with um, some painter's tape. I think, oh, I, I got a couple more here. So we might run out of this. Oh, maybe not. So this is that painter's tape that in theory you can uh, take off pretty easily. So this is just so I don't have any, or in theory, so I don't have any like bloops on the back. Like I don't want it kind of puckering and stuff while I'm sewing. So I'm just going to kind of have this nice, and flat. I'm not really stretching it. I'm just, you know, getting it so it's all laid out flat. So if you're doing this, you're going to want this side. So the side that's down, you're going to want to have that be the like right side of the fabric or the fabric with the pattern. Um, what's up right now should be the back of the fabric, like the bad side of the, the fabric. Not the bad side, but the non-correct side, the non-pretty side the white side, but I'm just using a solid fabric. So it's the same on both sides, but don't do that wrong. You're going to want, want the, um, your pretty pattern on the outside. All right, let's just get these corners. You can see I'm kind of, it's still a little bloopy here. 
So I'm just gonna swipe my hand across there. This one looks like I can redo it a little bit. Feel free to keep moving them around. All right, I'm gonna do the two bottoms, bottom corners, and then this one will be ready. Oh, uh, that's, uh, that, was a, that was a fun project. Sue says that the needle looks so real in 3D. So that was kind of a little attempt at needle painting or, or uh, silk shading, which is what we're gonna get way more into next week. So here's, here's that needle. That is not a real needle. That is stitched on, onto the piece there. So it looks, uh, looks like I laid a needle down there, but it's not, it is, it is stitched on there. Uh, so that actually is what we're gonna be doing. That sort of effect is what we're gonna be doing next week when we stitch the, the um, embroidery of the month. So this is the embroidery of the month, and we are gonna learn how to blend those colors. There's actually four colors in this besides the black, um, but like we are just kind of blending them from one to the other. I wanted the yellow to stand out a little bit more, so that's more of a big uh, jump, but like these three colors just kind of blend together and you know the your sweet that's three different colors blending together you know this red and pink blending together that is what we're going to be working on next week so if you've ever been interested in that uh kind of and it's the similar effect that we did with this needle here come next week for sure and uh the pattern and the bundle uh are available online still so um and i think i can probably ship them to you too before uh, before we start next week, but I promise you even you're, if you're a beginner, you'll be able to do it um, I I work through it and just kind of um, Kind of I'm gonna lay out how to do it. I'm gonna s stitch it with you guys You can ask questions along the way, but I promise you'll be able to blend colors like that if you want to give it a try uh, Sue I did not use any metallic thread on that at all uh, I think I just used a couple different grays. I think I used a dark gray, a medium gray, a light gray, and then white. I think that's what I got going on here. There's no metallic thread or anything. <laughs> All right, so I've laid the, the batting down. You can see a little bit of the edge around. The backing and the batting should just be a hair bigger than your front piece, just because when you're stretching out your front piece and stuff, then it has room to expand. So I'm going to just kind of lay this in the center here. It should kind of almost kind of stick to it, especially a piece this small. But we need to hold these layers of fabric together um, so they're ready to go when, um, when we want to quilt them together. So I have my, my pins here. These are my basting pins. They are uh, they're curved safety pins, so they're specially made for for this quilting, but it's just, ba you can use safety pins too, uh, but this is, has a curve, a bend in it, and it just makes it easy to go in and out of this fabric. So we're gonna hold all three layers together here. So I'm just gonna go like, I don't know, let's go right in the middle here. We're gonna work from the middle and kind of work our way outward. So we're just gonna kind of press as we go. I'm not stretching it again, I'm just kind of making sure it's flat. Oh, Colleen says, yippee, I have my bundle embroidery of the month, but I'm a bit scared to mess up. We are going to go through it. And it, and there is an easy version as well. Uh, so I showed you guys that that was the, the, um, the needle painting or the silk shading version. I also, uh, if you get the bundle or the pattern, it also comes with this version as well, which is, um, it's a, you get to play around with a chain stitch, which is really fun. So this is kind of, uh, a different version if you didn't want to go all super duper crazy and do all the uh, silk shading uh, you can this is the same pattern though so it's so different though it's just really neat what a different effect you can get just with different stitches so two different two different ways of doing it and you'll get you'll get both of those it's basically the same thing there are a few more markings that I put on the design for the for the silk shading one, but we will go through all of that little by little. 
I was a little scared about doing it too. I, some people have asked me before, though, if I do a silk shading demo, and I'm like, you know what? Let's do it. And uh, I designed that block. I designed the um, the Your Sweet Embroider of the Month exactly specifically to do to do thread painting or the silk shading. Um, same thing. I'm just those silk shading, thread painting. That all that all means the same thing. Do I need to put more on here? I think this is probably enough. Yeah, I think I'm gonna work from the inside out. So I don't I don't think I need any on these flaps on the edges. Ugh, or do I? I'm gonna put some on. It's making me nervous having those free corners there. So yeah, so if you want to do a quick embroidery of the month, then do that easier version with the chain stitches, and we might go over that a little bit. Uh, for the for the um, demo next week for the embroidery of the month, ooh, this one, see, some of these are just really dull. I'm going to toss that one. If you get a dull one of these, just throw it away. You don't want to all that poking through all your fabric. But yeah, it, it takes a long time to do the silk shading. So if you want something done quick, I would just do um, the, the easy version. But we're just going to do the peach for the, the thread painting, just because it's going to take a long time. But it's worth it. It, it really is kind of fun once you get going. All right, this is our first one ready to go. I'm going to remove the tape. I'm hopefully going to reuse the same tape. I know we're going quite a bit late tonight, you guys, but I would love to just finish getting these all sandwiched. I'm going to go a little bit faster, I think. But this one, so it's called a sandwich, a, a sandwich, a quilt sand, sandwich uh, once you have these three pieces together. And it's because, you know, you have your three layers of fabric, your three layers of pieces here. It's kind of kind of like a little sandwich, but this is the first time that you can really kind of feel what it's going to be like as a quilt. So I, I kind of like love, love this stage. So, all right, this guy's done. We got two more to do quick. Uh, I know it's late kind of dawdling around here today, I guess. <laughs> it happens. So let's, let's get this guy. I'm going to do the opposite ends first. Just smoothing it out. Oh, that's nice, Sue. Sue says she likes the colors in this quilt. It's nice and shrink. Well, that's what I was hoping it would be. Um, I I don't do tranquil very well, I don't think, so <laughs> it was a bit of a challenge. I don't do soft and tranquil well, really. So uh, all my other quilts are kind of more bold <laughs> and loud. Uh, so this was, this was a challenge. I actually still think it there's some like loudness to it uh which i'm like man i still i still didn't get that just kind of light tranquility <laughs> of it so i'm glad i'm glad you think that because i still feel like i'm fighting to get there but maybe that's my problem maybe i shouldn't fight to be tranquil i don't know all right let's get this guy down a few pins in him so i might be able to stretch this a little bit Eh, that's probably not a good idea. I'm going to just um, pin as usual. I am going to try and straighten the sashing out, though, as I pin, because this is getting pulled pretty crooked. Oh, Robin says, my kids said sandwich when when they were little. <laughs> ah, must be getting late. Words, words, words and numbers. Those go pretty quickly when it gets late. We're starting here first, and then I'll get the corners last, I think. Maybe we don't need them in the middle here. I could probably just get the corners, and that'd be plenty good for this quilt. I mean, this this is small. It's not like I'm doing a huge, a huge quilt where I'm doing this for the whole quilt. The other thing nice about this quilt as, a, as you go is I get to do this on the table here. I would be doing this on the floor, most likely, if 
if it was a large quilt. Actually, I probably wouldn't. Not in this house, just because I wouldn't have enough floor room for it. Oh, Colleen says one of her said milk. Wait, mi milt, uh, milt instead of milk. <laughs> I think my brother said yogurt instead of yogurt. And so every once in a while we say yogurt, which is funny. This guy might get a few extra pins. He needs to be held here a little bit more, I think. But let's... Oh, this is pretty loose, too. Eh, maybe I do need more pins than just the corners here. Yeah, let's get let's get one more in the middle there. Ooh, look at that ice cream cone. What are we going to do for quilting for that guy? I don't know. That'll be fun. We'll get to figure out all that stuff tomorrow. And with this quilt as you go, I'm just kind of playing around and trying things out with quilting. I'm not... Like, I'm not doing some overall design or anything. I'm just playing around. I can do some overall design on some other quilt. This one's... This one's to learn stuff to try and practice and play around. Ooh, this might be... Is this the first block? This might be the first block we did. Nah, that can't be. Can it? Nah, we would have had sewn it in a quilt already, I would think. Yeah, this can't be the first one. I think I'm thinking of the first Splendid Sampler. There was a heart in there. Alright, this guy's done. Let's save the tape. Alright, another little sandwich baby quilt. So fun. This would be just the perfect size for a little blankie to carry around. All right, number two. Okay, last one here. So this is our third one. I don't know if we'll get these all quilted this week, but uh, we'll get at least, we'll get at least two quilted and we might just stay late to do, to do all three. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. It also kind of depends on how intricate we end up quilting it. I have no idea what we're going to do yet for, for the quilting. So if you have any ideas, uh, let me know tomorrow and we might give it a go. Because why not? We've done hand quilting on, uh, on uh, one of these blocks. We've done ruler work on one. I kind of just like going with the flow and trying some motifs out. I do, I do like my feathers. That's a, that's a fun way. Uh, that, I think that's just, I don't know, there's something super fun about that for me. All right, and our last one. Ooh, let's get it all on the. It's a little bit big on some of the, these sides, so I wasn't even getting on the batting, and we're going to want that. Okay, I think we're good. Last one! Then we'll wrap it up for the night. Oh, remember we left these little kind of dangly bits? That's kind of cute. I'm doing the four sides first again for this. Oop, tape's coming off a bit. Ooh, come on, there we go. That just wouldn't go through. Some of this will be a little goofy quilting, 
Like, this is pretty loose here, so this is going to have some sort of puckering, unless we don't quilt it at all and it stays poofy. Uh, that'll be... we'll have to... I don't know what the decision on that will be. And then, like, this octopus, I don't know what we're going to do for him. If we should go on the inside, should we trace around it, or should we just, you know pretend it's not even there and stitch a bunch of designs all over, all over the top. I mean, that's what an all over quilt would look like. It would just be the same design over the whole thing. But I there's a, we're stitching through a lot of layers. Oh, this too, these two are stitching through a ton of layers. Actually this one too. Gosh, I hope we don't break some break needles tomorrow uh, or the rest of this week. But if we do, I got extras, but you know, that's, that's one of the dangers of of all of these layers. And I think the other one had a lot of layers too. Ugh, it's gonna be interesting. We might be doing some trouble shooting this week in quilt land again. Ooh, bubbles. Oh yeah, bubbles over him. Ooh, okay, I like it. We could do bubbles going all the way up into this piece maybe, that would be kind of neat. Like, this one could be all about the octopus and, um, I mean, we could have other fish and stuff in here or something, too. All right, you're giving me ideas already. I like it. Okay, this is it. That's our last one. Let's cover this up. All right. Don't need our tape anymore. Our last little sandwich. Then we can kind of see what they'll all look like together here. Throw away that one pin that just wouldn't pin. All right, our last little piece. Okay, let's take a look at all three. All right, so this is the start of our next little quilt. So you can kind of see, you can kind of get a, a feel of, you know, if I fold this over, you can kind of get a feel of what this quilt is going to look like overall. It is just kind of the white with a lot of this tan and yellow um, and a lot of this orange, really. So awesome, we got three things to quilt. I'm stoked. And again, an example of what I'm talking about this is what we're doing. So here's the last one that, that I did that's all quilted. So you can see like all the play and all the fun quilting we did on that. You can see on the back, uh, all the quilting. So we're just having fun. We are just going to play around like what we did with this one, uh, with each one of these for the rest of the week. So time to play with some free motion quilting. I'm excited. All right, you guys, we are done for this evening. All right, hello again. So I'm I'm super stoked to get going on this. This it was really fun the other day when we did some free motion quilting, and I just can't wait to do it again. Uh, here is one of our guys that we'll be working on tomorrow. Uh, we'll we'll decide. So we'll just pick tomorrow. We already got an idea with those bubbles on the octopus, so maybe that's the one to start, the one that there's some sort of semblance of an idea for. So, <laughs> I don't know. All right, you guys. Thanks again. Um, we do, I, I'm going to have an email going out tomorrow morning again for the Your Sweet uh, Embroidery of the Month. Again, we'll be stitching up the that little peach, and maybe we'll get more done. Maybe we'll stitch the strawberry, too, if we have time. Uh, again, there is the, that easier version that comes with this as well. So those bundles are available. Uh, if you order by tomorrow, you'll probably get it in time to start next week. Uh, pending mail is good <laughs> this week, <laughs> but you'll get it at some point during the week for sure. And, um, you'll be able to uh, catch up with that. And if you, you'll also get the pattern immediately, the digital PDF pattern when you get the bundle and the pattern's also available by itself as well. So check that out at penguinandfish.com and I will see all y'all tomorrow night uh, for some free motion quilting. Have a good evening all. Good night. <laughs>